For centuries, people from all over the world have been attracted to Western New York as a place to live. Immigrants from Germany had an especially strong impact on what you'll see in the museum. The Germans came in two distinct waves. The first began to arrive after 1792, when a road was cut from central Pennsylvania into the Genesee country. These were second generation Pennsylvania Germans, or Pennsylvania Dutch, who pushed northward seeking new lands to farm. Some settled here, but many continued northward and eventually settled in Canada. Two of the families who stayed were the Hetchlers and the Kiefers, whose log houses are now preserved at the museum. The next, much larger influx started in the 1830s and lasted until the end of the century. Unlike the Pennsylvania Germans, this group came directly from fatherland and included Catholics and some Jews. Many were from large cities, had good educations, and were professionals or craftsmen by trade. Among them were potters who took jobs in the new factories sprouting up along the canals. There, they made the colorful blue and gray stoneware you'll find throughout the village. This second wave of German immigration was so large that by the end of the 1800s, Germans were the single largest ethnic minority in Rochester. Recently, in our own time, a new wave of Pennsylvania Germans have found Western New York. The hardworking Amish and Mennonites. In a way, the Genesee Country Village and Museum itself is the product of the second wave of German immigration to Western New York. In 1857, Caspar Whaley arrived in the United States from Wurttemberg, Germany. He settled in Rochester, where he became a sausage maker. In 1976, Caspar's great grandson, John L. Whaley, chairman of the Genesee Brewing Company, opened this museum to the public. Danke, Deutschland. 